Hi there, Bosus. Today we're going to talk about going back in time and getting previous relics from earlier expansions. With the new Mandeville relic coming out, some new players are like, oh, I should see what the other relic weapons are. There is a relic grind in each expansion, a Rum Reborn, Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, and Shadowbringers. With proper planning and knowledge, you can start working on these relics today, way before you even pick up the first quest, since a lot of the materials that require Poetics and Grand Company seals can be purchased prior to the beginning. Let's go over each relic and give some tips to start in general overview of difficulty. I will put out actual full guides for each relic and some tips and tricks, resources, spreadsheets, so make sure to like and subscribe for those future videos. This is no easy feat and will require a lot of time, but if you start now, you can really get ahead of the game. Starting in a Rum Reborn. These relics are straight up booty. They are tedious, annoying, grindy for literally no reason at all. Relics made back in the day are a different breed altogether. To give you an example, the base weapon for ARR is a quick quest, acquiring the weapon with materia in it, a trial, a dungeon, all that can be ran and synced, which is great, an overworld enemy, another trial, and then three of the original trials, Ifrit, Garuda, and Titan, and then quenching oil. This took around 35 to 40 minutes to complete for one job. 10 jobs at, let's say, and be generous, say 40 minutes on average, is going to be around 6.6 .6 hours for just the base weapon set for each job. And that's just the foreplay, baby. Luckily, step two is just a few poetics, and then you're on to step three. This is fate farming for a 25% chance of an item to drop and we did this in a group in my discord which by the way if you're in the north american data center we will start regular farming group for relic weapons mounts and other farmables you can join my discord down below we're hoping to expand it to the eu data center but if only there's enough interest the atma step which is gathering a material from different fates in 12 zones took three hours I did get multiple, which is only the saving grace from this step that you can just have any Zenith weapon item level equipped from any job and farm 10 from each area all at once if you want to complete this step ahead of time. This goes on and on for ARR Relic. There are books which are deemed as the worst part of the Relic Grind farming, which is 9 books in total with over 19 objectives for each book. Yes, you heard that right. You're looking at doing leave quests, certain fates that you have to wait to spawn, running a few dungeons unsynced, not too bad, and certain enemies on the overworld map. Oh, by the way, that's just halfway through the steps for completing the entire weapon for just one job. You have four more after that with a metric ton of objectives to do. I think this is just going to be better as a group overall, if not anything, for just having a party and people to talk to. You can also have Netflix running. I don't know what kind of drugs the ARR Relic Farming writers were on when they made this, but I want what they're having. Needless to say, ARR Relic grinding looks to be the most difficult and tedious to do, but I will have to argue they are some of the best looking relics in the game. Moving to Heavenward Relics, thankfully this one is not as much of a slog as the others and you should start this as soon as possible. Not in the way you think though. Most of the Heavenward Relics can be started before even picking up the quest, as the majority of these steps require items that are purchasable for Poetics and Grand Company seal items. Let's go over a few. Step 1 is some fate farming for crystals, or if you happen to have a completed ARR relic weapon, you can turn that in to instantly complete this step. Odds are though, you probably don't. Fate farming as a group will be way easier. After getting those, step 2 is where the poetics come into play. You need 10 unidentifiable bone or seed and shell, and 4 king cake, dispelling arrow, titanium alloy, and adamantite. All of these you can start purchasing today, yes, right now. Go to your vendor, purchase them. If you go to most Poetics vendors, I personally like using the Idashire one and go to Special Arms, you can see these are available for purchase. You'll need 130 in total of each Bone Shell or in Seed if you want all 13 and 52 total for Grand Company Seals. That surmounts to about 19,500 Poetics for just one stack of 130. For all four, you're looking at 78 thousand poetics for just the ore seed shell and bone. You see why now I'm making this video and telling you to start now. Some of these can be attained from different ways like beast tribes, which I did pick a few up from the ones that I had already completed and just had extra currency. The grand company seal items can be bought from the market board, but if you have extra seals or don't have anything to buy with GC seals, you may as well just start throwing them all at this. The GC seal items in total will cost you about 1 million GC seals for this step, which with quick ventures and running your dailies and rolling on gear, you can hit that in a pretty decent amount of time. 
That is just step three though. You have five steps after this one before you get your first relic. I highly recommend checking out the Final Fantasy Relic Tracker in order to start planning out materials and items you may need and start purchasing with Poetics and Grand Company seals. Moving on to the Eureka Relic, this relic requires to completely complete Eureka, which by itself is a feat in its own, as well as requires a crap ton of crystals from the four different areas to upgrade your relic. You will get a fair amount for actually just doing the content and leveling, but nowhere near enough to do 15 relics. You can purchase the beginning of the relics from the Calamity Scavenger in the starting cities and basically use crystals to upgrade them from our main man Geralt. Eureka does have its own leveling system and mechanics. I finished the first area in about three hours with some friends and essentially just do my challenge log every week to level up. You'll want to start doing your challenge log as soon as you're able to because getting levels is more than half of the battle in Eureka. As you get to later levels though, there are some tips and tricks I've heard about like a mirror trick or a reflect trick which you can gain a lot of XP really quickly and basically just doing fates in Eureka will net you a lot of crystals over a decent period of time. This is by far better with a big group of people, but Eureka is still quite busy, so finding a party during regular hours on your server shouldn't prove difficult. There is a Eureka website that you'll need, which will show you all the enemies, and you can do a shout in Eureka in order to get the tracker ID, which will tell you where the instance is in the fate spawning. You can see now why I'm doing individual videos for relics and not having it all in one video. Let's talk Shadowbringers. There's a bit of a gimmick to this one that can really help out, similar to Heaven's Ward, but it takes quite a bit of time setting up. The first step is relatively easy, but you'll need around a thousand poetics in total to get the first step weapon. So just right off the bat, you're talking about 17,000 poetics in order to get all 17 weapons started. After this step, each step is a repeatable quest that you just need active in order to get the memories. You do not need the job or weapon equipped, it's more tied to the activity you're going to be doing. There are two ways to get these memories, usually by either doing actual Boja activities, which if you're like me and completed Boja already, i just rather do everything outside of Boja that I can and it's better for multitasking. The second step is fate farming, which you can just do a small party of blue mage and grind out these memories will need 60 total, 20 from three different areas, but they are a guaranteed drop from the fates in heaven's ward. So a few blue mages can ram's voice and ultra vibration through these fates pretty quickly. If you do not have boja leveled yet, then it would be better to go through boja first as you'll need to finish boza to get some of the later items required. Boja can also be a good way to do it if you're doing Heaven's Ward Relic only and basically all the fates in Boja give you poetics. This is also true for fates in Eureka. Step three is Memories of the Dying, which you can get from level 60 dungeons and your first time daily leveling roulettes. Pretty great to have this active and just get a memory or two a day via roulettes. Step four is a Realm Reborn Alliance Raids, which is basically the only Alliance Raid I ever get when I do Alliance Raid roulette. So you can mass a huge amount of these crystals pretty easily that way, so on and so forth. You get the picture. This is why setting up five jobs and having these steps active at all times can be a huge effort up front, but can essentially get your relics over time for just doing stuff you're already completing. The goal of this video is to show you that if you want a relic, you're going to have to plan for it, prepare for it, and it isn't just going to drop in your lap. If you want to join us in doing relic farms in the North American data center, you can join my discord down below. Anyone is welcome to join. I hope this video really gives you an overall view of relics and shows you that just because they are earlier expansions, they are not easy by any means to obtain. I wouldn't say that though for crafters and gatherer relics. Since you guys really loved my how to get all eight crafter relics in seven hours video, I will also have how to get the gatherer botanist and minor relics in just a few hours located under my crafters and gatherers playlist. You can go through my library of guides to find videos you're looking for, for controller guides, crafters gatherers, and now relics. I love doing this kind of intensive guide content. And if you appreciate it, don't forget to like and comment down below as it really helps my videos out. A huge thank you to all of my Patreons and YouTube members. Your support here really allows me to create these kind of extensive and intensive videos. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides or videos, then you can click here.